Tamara Leskovar, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who is speaking? Yeah. Uh, Tamara Leskovar. 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 Uh, Tamara
and two groups uh, of tumuli just beneath the, the um, early Iron Age hill fort. So we did a lot of geophysics in this area and one important result we had was at this uh, flat cremation cemetery it was known by previous research but only for 15 graves were known so how was the portion we didn't really know we did geophysics as you see here and there were these the dots anomalies which were different as in the other areas we we also measured we excavated that and we found some quite diverse graves as it was said before this diversity is quite big we had problems with our uh, uh, results from the geophysics so we had to go back redo these models model how each of the graves would look like we measured also when we were excavating uh, susceptibility so we can compare the data from the excavations with the geophysical not only the models but the measurements so we could go again back with the analysis and in the end we have quite good results the only grave which we didn't see was here it was just a shallow pit with a few pieces of charcoal and a few pieces of bone i mean call that a grave but yeah um, and then in the end, we have this, this view on this cemetery. So from 15 graves, we go from to over 100 graves. So this is quite a difference if you look through the, from the cultural point of view. So this is quite a large group. And on the other side, we have around 150 uh, barrows with one individual in each. So we came from 15 to 150 to 100 to 150, which is... Um, quite a difference and again comparing these graves you see they're quite diverse and if we go then into each individual grave again this is uh, some of the graves show elaborate uh, rituals going on because this grave for instance you had first burning on the floor then one plate was put in burning again on this on this plate and then the grave was constructed on in and this urn was put uh, inside the grave as you see it here uh, and then we have other instances like this grave here we we took it also to uh, CT scanning we did all the excavations all the lines every one centimeter excavating very slowly and then doing all the drawings and again CT of the inside because it's magmatic metamorphic rock and the CT doesn't go through very well, which is what, because the urn was like that. And then in the end, it was interesting that we found this uh, shirt inside of the, of, the, of the jug, inside the urn. And in the end, it was found out that it comes from the bowl, which was broken from the, from the pressure of the earth. And it fell into this jug, which means that the jug probably was holding some organic substance. So this thing this fragment could sink to the bottom of the of the of the jug, which is quite interesting story. But of course, it's one grave. And as this last year, it's interesting for us because we found another flat cemetery associated with Postela. So things changed a little bit more. We did we excavated only two graves, but geophysics shows there are probably more graves again, and we were happy with this last CT. Uh, it's just uh, a week old. This is the area where we have the, cremation, the the bone material and what is on the top. Very nicely, it's a, it's a pin. And you see, I already see the organic uh, thing around which was pinned through with a pin. So, but we're not going too far now because it's just the beginning. And a broken knife which was on two parts of the of the above the, the remains. I will go to another uh, site, Novine, which we did, another hill fort with tumuli all around this ridge. And in this area, again, a flat uh, cremation cemetery, we excavated this rampart, which is a late Iron Age lamp rampart. Beneath it was a grave and another grave, which was here where the tumuli are located, but it was in an area which is on the surface, on the relief, it's flat, so it might not be a, a, a tumulus. I'm showing this one again because it's so fascinating uh, how these results of the CT scan are important. Because this 
we, when we were excavating, we saw bones outside. So we thought it's a ritual, a little bit outside, a little bit inside. No, these were roots from three which broke the urn. So you can see very good the roots going through the urn and damaging and pushing out the bone uh, material, which is more, even more important. This is what we get when we dig it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. We see that on the CT scan, all, all the whole pieces. And we were measuring then, counting that. And as you can see, we have in the CT, we have 34 bones, which are bigger than eight centimeters, none after excavation. And really it was slow, proper excavation. And we did wet sieving of the material. And we had at the end, bone dust, 280 grams, which of course was something which was broken when we were excavating it. So this is quite important to do the proper, uh, proper analysis. And which is new windows are of course opening when you do CT scanning. It's the density of the bone. Is this connected to, to temperature of firing? We were doing experiments in that, but I'm not going into that any further at this moment. <coughs> Again, bones from the Urnfield culture and what we see in the early Iron Age. Although the, the graves, very, very similar, very similar in the flatlands and here at Pustela, we see in the flatlands quite different burning than here, but I will not go into these tables anymore because with new methods used, thank you Tamara, uh, we have to throw that away. And now when we play with histology and when we play with FTIR, we see that there are quite some differences. What is the observation, <coughs> the macroscopic observation and the measurements doing with, with other scientific methods. We also did where something occurs in the grave and we don't have anything like correlation. We have head all around, feet all around, arms all around, torso all around. And then, of course, pots were not empty when they put them in the graves. What was in the pots? We see sometimes some, some, some different earth soil, which is on the bottom. But then we made analysis and we see uh, organic remains. Uh, we compared the settlement and the cemetery. And interestingly, that in both, of course, it's animal and plant, plant remains but plant then prevails in the cemetery, which means it's, it's, it was the pots were probably used differently and the amounts of, of organic remains, lipid and so on, found in the pots, it's much, much higher in the settlement than in the cemetery. So not all the pots were used like that. And we did petrography of pottery uh, for Postela, which means uh, took samples of pots from different parts and we took also clays. So in the end, what did we find out? There are differences between settlement when stuff is more, looks more randomly than in the cemetery. And there are some pots uh, in the cemetery which don't occur, uh, some, some recipes which don't occur in the settlement. And for those, we didn't find the source yet. For three of the, for the recipes, we did find the source uh, already. And so what holds a cremation grave? my question which I posted in the beginning. We are learning to extract more and more information and by learning, I mean learning is a continuous dynamic process of investigation where the key elements are experience, knowledge, access and relevance. It requires a culture of inquiry and investigation rather than one of response and reporting. Thank you for your attention.